Vincent, it's such a nice day. Hi, guys. Why are you so tired? Hold on, let me catch my breath. I was just like running super fast outside. I'm like one of the fastest fur balls ever, like ever, 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 ever fastest. What do you think? Do you deserve a medal? Well, yeah, probably. I mean, I'm like super fast. Well, Gus, if you were even a part of the Olympics, you wouldn't even win aluminum foil. What? What's that supposed to mean? I ran like super fast. Aren't like running? Isn't running part of the Olympics? Yeah, I think you gotta be a little faster to be in the Olympics. Well, what about the ancient Olympics or something? Well, you know what? There's so much to learn about the Olympics. Why don't we learn about the Olympics? Good idea? Yes. All right, let's go. The first Olympic Games happened about 3,000 years ago in the year 776 BC. And they were created by the ancient Greeks who loved sports. And they created a festival of sports that was held every four years in August to honor their god, Zeus. These ancient Olympic Games continued until the year 393. The ancient Olympic Games were much different than what they look like now. First, men were the only people allowed to take part in the ancient Olympics. Married women couldn't play or even watch the games. If they were caught watching, they would be punished by being thrown off a cliff. That's a bit harsh, in my opinion. Does anyone agree with me? Say aye. Aye. Okay, good. You actually hesitated a little bit longer than I thought. That's a pretty harsh punishment, but let's move on. The men competed in Olympic events like running, the long jump, javelin, shot put, boxing, and even chariot racing. The ancient Olympic Games could be very rough and violent. Believe it or not, some of the ancient Olympic athletes were seriously injured or even killed. And one of the most brutal events was called pancreation. And this was a type of martial art that combined wrestling as well as boxing. The only rules in pancreation were no biting or gouging your competitor. Did you know all the male athletes? at the ancient Olympic Games compete naked? Wait, what? Yeah. Naked? Like, no clothes, nothing? No. Wow, I would be a little bit embarrassed to play in those games. Wow. And also, during these ancient Olympic Games, there were no gold, silver, or bronze medals like we have today. The winner was given a wreath of olive leaves as a prize, and there could only be one winner. There can be only one. <laughs> so now that we've learned a little bit about the ancient Olympics, now let's talk more about the modern Olympics. The first modern Olympic Games took place in Athens, Greece in 1896. And it was created by a French educator and historian named Pierre de Cabortin. Pierre loved sports and believed the world's countries would have more chances for peace if they gathered together to play sports. 214 athletes who were all men competed in 43 different events from 14 different countries. Then in 1913, the Olympic flag was designed by Pierre as well. And the Olympic flag, as you can see, has five colored rings on a white background that are still used to represent the Olympic Games today. These five rings were created to represent Europe, Asia, Africa, America, and Australia. So I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, when was the first woman allowed to compete in the Olympics? The first Olympic Games to allow women was the 1900 Games in Paris. I do not know if I'm going to say this correctly, so I'm going to put her name on the screen. But Helene de Portales was the first woman to compete as well as the first female champion. She won a sailing event. 
And real quick, listen to this message quickly from Gus, Cadence, and Quinn. Make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up button below. It really helps our channel. Here, it looks like this. Put it on the face! What? It's there! Today, the Olympic Games are the largest sporting event in the entire world. Wow. And today, there are the Summer and Winter Olympic Games, and over 30 sports are played. So, what is the Olympic flame? The Olympic flame is used as a symbol to link the ancient and modern Olympic Games together. The Olympic torch relay involves many different athletes carrying the torch closer and closer to the location where the games will be played. And the Olympic flame stays lit the entire time until the closing ceremony. First, the Olympic Games start with an opening ceremony. Each country's team enters the Olympic Stadium dressed in their official country's uniform. One of that country's competitors carries the team's national flag and leads the group. And hey, guess what? The first team to enter the stadium is always the Greek team. And the other nations follow in alphabetical order according to the language of the country hosting the games that year. The host team is always the last to enter the stadium. The International Olympic Committee, or the IOC, based in Lausanne, Switzerland, was founded in 1894 and is responsible for organizing the Summer and the Winter Olympic Games. Who decides where the Olympics take place? That's a great question, Quinn. If a city wants to host the Olympic Games, they let the IOC know, and the IOC will make a decision based on who offers a bid to have the Games played in their city. The Olympics take place every four years. And today, the Summer and Winter Olympics take place two years after each other in a rolling cycle. The first Winter Olympics took place in 1924. The Summer Olympic Games have a larger variety of events than the Winter Olympic Games. The most popular events at the Summer Olympic Games are gymnastics, swimming, as well as track and field. And every single event for the Winter Games are played either on snow or ice. And ice skating and skiing are very popular and ice hockey is a popular team event. So, what are the Paralympics? That's another great question, Quinn. The Paralympic Games are a series of events involving athletes with a range of disabilities. The first Paralympics took place in 1948 for disabled war veterans. And there are also the Special Olympics. The Special Olympics is the world's largest sports organization for children and adults with intellectual disabilities as well as physical disabilities. And the Special Olympic World Games are not held during the same year with the Olympic Games or Paralympic Games. So who is the most successful Olympic athlete? I think... I think... <laughs> trying to say that was not successful i think you're trying to say who is the most successful olympic athlete i successfully bashed your tooth with my eye it's actually michael phelps the american swimmer who is the most successful olympic athlete of all time the second most successful athlete is larissa lentinina a gymnast from the soviet union and a victory ceremony is held during the games after the end of each event. Medals are awarded for first, second, and third place. First prize is gold, second place is silver, and third place is bronze. 
Then the flags of the winners' countries are raised as the national anthem of the first place gold medal winner is played. And hey, guess what? The modern Olympic Games have only been canceled a handful of times since they began in 1896. The first was in 1916 due to World War I, then in 1940 and 1944 due to World War II, and the Summer Olympics of 2020 were postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, hey, guess what? Now you, them, and I know all about the Olympics. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Bye. Bye.